Well, first of all, welcome to Toronto, and thank you, thank you for bringing us this magnificent film. I, you know, I'm sitting there watching this movie, and I'm going, Pixar just steps it up with each film. How do you guys just keep topping and topping yourselves? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we think about it because then I never get out of bed. Yeah, the pressure that's would be too huge, much. huge <laughs> bar, you know, to you know, to beat, to top, or even meet. We take time. I mean, we these movies take anywhere from four to six years to make. And so um, for the better part of the first two years, all we do is just think about the story and drill on it and design things and think, you know, is this working? And we put the movie together and look at it as a whole just with storyboards every few months. And we look and say, is that working? No, let's tear it down and do it again. And we just do that over and over again for, for years. Yeah. And um, so there's no magic formula. It's completely trial and error. But we don't rush with just the first draft of a script. We look at our first script and we think, great, this is a good starting off point for the creative journey we're all about to go on. And it'll take lots of twists and turns. But no Pixar movie has ever shot um, its first script and then said, okay, well, done. Of course. Yeah. 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 That's magnificent. And I, and I wonder, what was the inspiration for this? Because when I first heard about it, I went, okay, Scotland, you know, girl, brave, yeah, okay, interesting. And then I sat and watched this movie last night, and I think it's probably now one of my top up next to Nemo, but my right. top, <laughs> nothing beats Good Nemo. to know, good I have to, to know. tell you. Didn't toss that Nemo, bar. I don't know what it is about totally. me. Totally. But this really was absolutely yeah. fantastic, and uh, I just, where did the idea, the inspiration for it come from? Well, it was all, it all the, the kernel of the idea came from Brenda Chapman, who's the uh, fellow director on, on Brave, and she, it comes out of her experiences. You know, Pixar is a filmmaker-driven studio, so everything kind of comes from within the filmmaker. At least that's where we go to first mm -hmm. for these ideas, you know, and inspirations out of our own kind of life and our experiences or, or like. So Brenda had her, her relationship with her very precocious, you know, six-year-old, and and she projected ahead and going, oh, my gosh, what's she going to be like when she's a teenager? Mm -hmm. And then that kind of like, okay, that's a great, great dynamic. Let's explore that. Now where are we going to put the story? And both she and I have... Uh, uh, ancestry, Scottish ancestry and heritage, and I'm a medieval history buff and a Scottish history buff, so to kind of put it in this land of the Celts, you know, to put it in, you know, ancient Scotland just seemed like a nice fitting place because in that we can pull from all the resources of the myths and legends. Right. And is there a way to blend these two things, you know? And it just became through that trial and error, through exploring the story, mm -hmm. um, you know, building it from scratch, you know, you have a blank piece of paper, trying stuff out over and over again, you just find the right combination of, of elements and ideas, and yeah. boom, Brave is born. Right, and beautiful. I mean, what, a, what wonderful characters, of course, and you've got this girl, I mean, finally, a female protagonist. I mean, yeah. wow, why yeah. did it take so long? Well, it yeah. comes out again, like, the filmmaker's ideas at the studio, and these things take a long time to make, but, you know, this idea came up, was pitched years ago, and it takes a long time to bring it to fruition, but it was the right idea, the right director, the right time, and it sort of all came together, and now it's like, okay, let's start this journey. Six years later, it's 2012, and, and we have our film. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's a wonderful character. And the mother, too. I mean, I just love the fact that the mother is the boss, you yep. know, and how, you know, the, the, the king kind of steps back. Like, yeah. you know, it's just hilarious to watch it, but it just... What I love so much about this movie just felt real. Like anybody could relate to these characters. Yeah. I think is yeah. that was that a yeah. Real that's what we're going after. It's real family relationships, and we we do draw on our own experiences, and we also we make the films that we would want to watch and that we feel are relatable. Everything from our own family relationships to um, our friendships and. Um, and even the extended family of the clans, those lords, in a way they're like the uncles that you have to dinner and you're like, oh, who's going to say the wrong thing and upset somebody and what's going to go wrong tonight? But your families, you all come together and the clans of the kingdom are almost like that, you know, this extended family. Yeah. Um, is it Marie, Merida, right? Merida. 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 I don't know why I can Mer Merida. I mean, what a wonderful character, but I have to, you know, as we were joking around earlier, her hair, oh my God. I want hair like that. Like, yeah. where do we buy this wig? Uh, actually, well, right, the Disney right. store. It's but. a Scottish product. It's actually Scottish product. Yeah, you can go, that you go need to, for your hair. Go to, to the Scottish hair. salon. Yes. I really want to. Yeah. No, it's very, you know, she has. Because I will fly there. Just me. Right. Anything to get this hair to go that's unfrizzy, right. I will go yeah. get it. so deliberate in her character because, you know, we've developed this character who was spirited and feisty and untamed and wild and unique. And so everything about her look 
had to say that. That meant the redness of her hair against the Scottish backdrop. It meant the curls. And, the frizz. And we the put frizz. in frizz. We put so in frizz. I said more frizz. Right. More frizz. Right. Well, I, my hair is like yours. My hair is very curly like yours. Yeah. And it goes in these ringlets. But there's the frizz. That, that's what curly hair does. Yeah, exactly. So we had to put the frizz in. You yeah. know? Oh, it's just, I just loved. Well, I couldn't get enough of looking at her. And she was yeah. stunning. You know, so really. And it had to have been a huge, I would think, challenge with this one as well. Because the animals that we see, yeah. the the backgrounds, the Scottish, you know, forest, everything. I can't, what was the most challenging thing to tackle in this film? Well, I, I mean, story is the most number one challenging thing to tackle in, in any Pixar film. Next to that, you know, it's, we set in this Middle Ages or we're set in Scotland and it's a very rugged, organic land. There's not a spot of land that doesn't have something weird growing and on it. Even drug upside down. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's okay. And Everything. the atmosphere and the weather and just so much variety. Um, Merida, everybody's running around in kilts. Everybody's got hair, you know, so there's all these tactile texture, organic stuff to make the movie. And it's what the computer hates to do. Mm -hmm. The computer wants a straight line and a corner and flat colors and no textures. That's what it loves. Mm -hmm. And we're giving it a film that it absolutely hates mm -hmm. to, to do. So wrangling the computer to give us Brave, you know, was the, that was a big chore, a big yeah. challenge. Amazing, amazing. A talented team of technical artists and creative artists, but, you know, all coming together and just, you know, really laboring and, and, and passionately working toward this story goal. Yep. Yeah, I, you know, there's so many uh, wonderful messages in this film, but I wanted to ask both of you, what does bravery mean to you? Mark, you want to start? Well, I think uh, bravery means to me, what was really great working on this film is that we all kind of understand, you know, charging a, you know, machine gun nest, you know, with a stick of gum and a, you know, butcher knife, you know, maybe if you have that, you know, more like a paper clip, right? And that's being to save your unit. So there's add that outward, you know, sense of bravery, you know, being courageous in the face of, you know, hostility or, or, or danger. But I think there's a, a much more subtler thing that we're brave every day throughout our life is, is that saying that we're wrong and owning our up to our mistake. You know, when we fall down, that ability to get right back up and rise to that challenge. So there's a lot of those different levels in brave I like. So I think it's much more the internal aspects of bravery that, that I was really interested in this. That's what brave means to me. Okay, how about you? Yeah, I think it's again the, those internal aspects in in a in a world where so many of us don't quite fit into the mold that that our families or the the larger world may want for us. Um, I like that this is a story about um, being who you are and, and speaking out your truth. You know, Merida says this is what I this is who I am. This is what I want to be, even if the world can't see it. And she has to you know endure a lot of obstacles along the way. But in the end, she does stay true to herself and also learn something about her larger world and, and her family's love. So I, I think it is um, brave to speak out your truth and be who you want to be even when everyone else is saying be somebody else. Yeah, I just want to know, is there going to be a spin-off movie with the three little brothers? There ought to be. <laughs> there ought to be because they're a riot. <laughs> they are all when they oh they're fantastic. And thank you because we now know exactly what men have under their kilts. Yeah, thank You're you welcome. so much. This thank is you. a magnificent film. Thank You're you welcome. and best of luck with it. Thank, thank you. you.